definitely don't mind me some quality quartz. Quartz movements are extremely accurate, and you can get a lot of value for the money. Often, when I look at my watch box, the only pieces still on time are the quartz models, and it's refreshing to not have to set the time prior to wearing. Seiko is a brand that continues to focus on their quartz collection. Today we're going to take a look at the Seiko Prospects Speed Timer Solo Chronograph, reference SSC817P1. Seiko is a brand that obviously took advantage of the quartz crisis in the watch industry during the 70s and 80s. Pop culture helped to drive the proliferation of quartz popularity, and the brands who were ready to capitalize on this tech did so. Cheaper, more reliable, more accurate, there are a lot of positive aspects about quartz timepieces. Since that time, and even with the following swing back to mechanical watches, Seiko has been continuing its history of developing innovative and attractive quartz timepieces for both average watch consumers and collectors alike. This watch case is made of stainless steel with dimensions equal to 39.5 mm in diameter, 45.8 mm lug to lug, with an effective lug distance with the bracelet at 49.7 mm, and 13.3 mm in thickness. The case is fully brushed and there's a solid case back. The chronograph pushers are at the 2 and the 4 o'clock, and there's a push-pull crown at the 3 o'clock. There's a thin black tachometer bezel encircling the face with beige text and hash marks that match the dial. A domed sapphire crystal protects the dial in this watch and has anti-reflective coating on the inner surface. At 39mm with a reasonable lug-to-lug, -lug, this case size works well with many wrist sizes, and it fits really nicely on my 17cm wrist. This watch has a respectable 100 meters water resistance and weighs in at around 160 grams. The dial is a really nice matte beige color, and there are dark blue subdials at the 3, 6, and 9, showing the hour of the day, the small seconds, and a 60 minute chronograph dial. At the outer edge of the dial is a minute track, and inside that sits crisp and impressive applied polished stainless steel hour markers. All three hands on this watch, and also the 3, 6, 9, and 12 hour markers, include Lumabrite, but it's not thickly applied or very strong. There's an unframed date window at about the 420 mark, and kind of seems like an afterthought. There's also an F and an E marker at the 6 o'clock subdial, and I can't really tell what the function of that is here. It seems to be somewhat of a power reserve indicator, but I'm not sure about that, and it doesn't seem to have a real function on this piece. This watch comes with a 3 length bracelet that's fully brushed with a fold over clasp and push button release. Starting at 20mm at the case, the bracelet tapers down to 18mm. The lengths of this bracelet are pretty chunky in terms of thickness, indicative of a cheaper bracelet that adds significant weight. It has just two micro adjustments on the clasp, and there is also half length to assist with fitting. The movement on this watch is the Seiko Solar Quartz Caliber V192, with an accuracy of plus or minus 15 seconds per month. The movement here is a full quartz movement, so you have pushers that are not very satisfying to push, with very little tactile feel, and it's actually pretty hard to tell whether you've activated the start-stop function. However, the chronograph hand actually ticks like a mechanical chronograph without the quartz jumping movement, despite this not being a mecha quartz chronograph. Upon reset, the chronograph hand takes its time to swing clockwise back up to the 12 o'clock. The solar aspect of this watch comes in through the subdials, which soaks in all the sunlight. Full charge operates for about a half a year. Currently retailing at over $650, you can get this for right around $500, which to be honest is not the cheapest Seiko chronograph you can get. So is this piece worth the price? I'm not really sold on that. The solar subdials are pretty cool and I like the thought of recharging a battery using the power of the sun. I also really like the color scheme here, with the matching tachometer, text color, and the fully brushed bracelet is decent. Having said that, there are many Seiko chronographs that are better choices in my opinion including my lovely SBTR027 that is hundreds of dollars cheaper and comes with the Mecha Course chronograph movement. I think this watch looks really good, and I also like the Panda Dial version, but I would more so be a buyer of this piece around the $200 mark or the $300 mark, but at $500 or $600, I think there are better options.